Hey, 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 welcome into another episode of Halos in the Infield, the podcast version here. The trio's not here, but two of us are. The duo is back. It's Todd Fox along with the Lone Star Halo over here to say vote yes, recall Artie Moreno. Ooh, yes, let's get him on the recall ballot now, yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> You got to vote for me. F that guy. Yeah, exactly. I'll take Fernando in a heartbeat. Pause. But as far as like the the vote, I'm voting for uh, <laughs> Fernando. But oh, well, I'm running now. That's fine. <laughs> yeah, that'd be, that'd be sick, yo. You got my vote. Nobody's allowed in the Don Julio Club except for us and our <laughs> original subscribers. So exactly. like and subscribe if you haven't already. <laughs> as long as you're 21. Uh, but uh, even even <laughs> after that, even after that though, I think. Uh, Voting for Fernando and him running the team from Texas is far better than what Artie's doing from Arizona. So, yeah, we'll, all of a sudden we're gonna have like super Texas like policies. <laughs> yeah. Everyone has to walk in holding an assault rifle, or you're not allowed in. Yeah, all and you must the- love Whataburger. That's all they sell in the stadium. Whataburger. Yeah, exactly. No more Big A Burger. It's just Whataburger. Whataburger. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> and Texas barbecue. Oh, yeah. And Torchies. Torchies Tacos. There you go. (laughs) So let's get started, shall we? Uh, Last we talked, and we're talking with you, uh, the Rangers and Angels were in game two of their series. So we were kind of like getting into that one pretty late. We already had recap game one, and uh, that game two was the Heaney start. So if you want to finish that one up real quick, what happened in that one? Yeah, so Andrew Heaney, uh, or that was yeah, Heaney was game one. Bradford was game two for the Rangers. Four point one innings pitch, gave up one run. Uh, so he pitched pretty well. It was White that did not pitch well for the Texas and uh, Leclerc. Angels ended up winning that game seven to three. And now the Angels. Oh, that's right. All right, Heaney pitched the next one. My bad. My bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jaime, our boy Jaime uh, had probably his worst start of the year that game. Now it wasn't horrible, but you know it was kind of what you'd expect out of a traditional number six guy, mm-hmm. you know, 4.1 innings pitch, three earned runs. But and with that, his season ERA is still down to 2.28. Guy's been doing great. The human glitch uh, had a good outing that time, but didn't later. We'll touch on that when we get there. Oh yeah. Loop stayed hot. Uh, he's actually been pretty good over the last, like what, like three weeks. I think he's only given up like one earned run. Something yeah. Like that. Yeah. So he, has he regained form? Potentially. Soriano's another guy we're going to talk about later, but he did well in this game that we were starting to become real big Soriano guys at that time. Mm -hmm. Uh, And really the biggest thing that I want to touch on is Carlos Estevez getting his 18th straight save. And the Angels club record was 19 straight saves. And that was, of course, by Troy Percy. Mm -hmm. Actually, no, that was uh, Lee Arthur Smith. Are you sure it wasn't Troy Percy? Yeah, it was Lee Arthur. He, he He holds the longest record. Because it was it was ninety five. It was for the Angels. Started, yeah, he started that year for the Angels. Yeah. No, uh, but I think it was nineteen to start the season. Like it was nineteen straight saves to start. Oh, a season. okay, okay, okay. Yeah, and you know Estevez was is is now flirting with it after this game. But this was a good game by the Angels, man. Uh, Hunter Renfro two run homer. You know he's starting to heat up a little bit. Mm-hmm. You know if he's in the two fifty to two sixty range, that's all I need out of Hunter Renfro. Correct. You know, hit 30 bombs a year, get 80 to 90 RBIs, and I'll take that out of a guy like Hunter Renfro. We don't need trap numbers. Yeah, yeah, that's the thing. Um, he's got to be a complimentary player. He can't be the guy. Yeah. So, yeah, if he's going to give you those type of numbers, hell, that's all we signed him for anyway. So uh, getting that victory was huge. The bullpen did really good. Uh, that was the extra innings game, correct? Uh, no, I believe this was only nine innings. The yeah. nine innings. Okay, the nine innings game. Yeah, they played their butts off in this game. Um, uh, really good bullpen help at the end. The Angels got enough run scoring right there. And to take the first two in Texas, where, again, a lot of people have been naysaying and doubting that they were just going to run away, and this was a series to push us back even further, uh, picking up the first two games was huge. Yeah, because at that point, um, you know, you were kind of playing with, with, the, with the house's money, right? Correct. You know, you were getting comped at that point. So we didn't have to worry as much about, you know, getting losing the series because at that point you guaranteed a split. We had all said if we could come out with a split out of Texas, we were going to be good. Exactly. And that's exactly what the team did. And they played the Rangers well. You know, the one game they lost, sure, some things kind of fell apart there. But, I mean, you know, a 6-3 loss 
isn't horrible against a first place Texas Rangers team. Uh, and let's talk real quick about that game. Let's do it. Uh, Reed Detmer, six innings pitch, one earned run, struck out eight, which was really good to see out of a guy like Reed Detmer, who had been struggling up to that point. His season in ERA is now down to 4.48, starting to trend towards something respectful because, you know, he was in what, the high fives? He was uh, seven at one point. Was he? Okay. Yeah. There you go. And then Jimmy Herger. That's the performance that I want to talk about. And this was a performance that got him sent down, right? Correct. So he's now one in three. He gave up three earned runs this performance, and his season ERA ballooned to 5.17. Uh, Tucker Davidson also came in, uh, picks an inning, and he gave up an earned run. Honestly, I don't know why Tucker Davidson's still here. Only I can think of is just the injuries. Mm. Uh, there's no way this cat sticks around once guys start to come back. And there have been a lot of guys being ma- either making their debuts or it seems like when it looks like all the pieces are falling into place, like a guy like Joyce goes down, you had more go down. So I get it. But and like you said, but in this game, like I wanted to pick your brain on it because people got my views on it because I was pretty adamant about what happened in this game. This was a game that I felt if you step on their throat, it was very close when Reed Detmers left the game. And, you know, you're in a real close uh, ball game. Why would you go, you know, one, one tie? Why would you go to your B team? And and yeah. that's why I want to know from you. I know those guys that you mentioned before in game two pitched, you know, your, most of your stars pitched out of your bullpen the night before. But I mean, do you feel the same way I do about this one? I mean, one, one tie and you go to your two worst pitchers out of the pen. All right. So let's get this out of the way philosophy should not exist in a giant game against a division rival who's in first place ahead of you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Philosophy is out the window at that, at that point, I don't care about load management. The only reason you should not be eligible to play is if you are legitimately hurt. And I mean, legitimately hurt. You are physically unable to play because this is a series. Could you imagine how big this series would have been if we would have swept? Yes, we won the series, and that's great. I'm not complaining about that. If you would have told me, hey, we're going to take three to four against Texas, I would have taken that deal, no matter what. Yeah, yeah. I don't care if we lost that game. That one game that we lost was by 45 runs. Who the hell cares? Mm-hmm. So I'm happy that we won the series. But that doesn't change the fact that you had a chance to sweep the first place team. When you when Shelly Otani hit that home run, to give the Angels the opportunity to stay in the game, uh, you, you have to go all out. Why are you putting Jimmy Hergen in, in that situation? There's no excuse for it. There really isn't. Yeah, and that's one thing that, that bothered me because I'm thinking, you know, if, if Hergen's not in there to give up the, the two-run bomb, or even if he does, you yank him right away. You don't, and, and you're so scared of, of uh, what's his name, um, Seeger, and you're going to not go to T- Davidson right there, lefty on lefty. You're going to stick with Herget, which Herget get, proceeds to give up another home run. It's like, okay, if he doesn't do that at least, if he goes to to, to Davidson, maybe Davidson uh, you know, takes care of uh, Seager in that spot. Shohei's ninth inning home run, the two-run blast, ties the game right back up. And I've been under the impression of, hey, man, you got you got if you're in a tight ball game, if they fell behind, four to one then yeah use her get davidson but it was a tie game like you said division rival this wasn't kansas city the next series um if they would have had swept this series they would have left texas only down two and a half instead of four and a half that's the big that's the big what if if they would have actually played it out yeah and there's a big difference you know it doesn't seem like a big difference but in the grand scheme of things you know because you play so few division opponents you know, it really does make a difference. Now, the, the good news is the Angels have a pretty candy-ass schedule here for the next couple of weeks, which yep. is fine because while we were getting railed by, you know, the AL East earlier in the year, you know, guys like Texas and Houston had some pretty cupcake schedules. They had the so, central. Yeah, so I'll take, you know, the, the teams that are going to be rolling in here, mm-hmm. uh, you know, because I think after the Dodgers series, it gets a little easier, right? Like you have like Colorado and all that. Yeah, they go to Colorado, then they come home for Chicago, and um, I, uh, I forget who else they got. They they got a pretty- uh, they have Arizona, who's in first place. They yeah. have the Padres, who are still kind of trying to you know yeah get it together in their form. I know they're starting to heat up a little bit, and then you have the Dodgers to uh, close off before the All Star game, dude. It's crazy. The All Star break's almost here. 
Yeah, I mean, we're right. I just, I didn't even notice, right? Literally, we're like two weeks away. What? Yep. Where is the year gone, dude? It's it's flying by, man. It is literally flying by. Yeah, no, I, I literally just had like a like a midlife crisis right now in the middle of this goddamn recording. I'm like <laughs> sitting here like, am I about to die? <laughs> well, well, you start thinking about the season when, when you know, like getting a good chunk into it when guys start hitting about 20 home runs or more. And now we yeah. got a bunch of guys hitting 20 some odd home runs. Our own Shohei Otani is leading the entire uh, major leagues, which we'll get into. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because that was a question of the day that I want to ask you towards the end once we get to, you know, that point. Yeah. Okay. Uh, anything else on this game? No, just that it was uh, severely disappointing because nothing was guaranteed for Nando for game four. You know what I mean? The Angels could have easily – it would have been one of those splits where we, like you said in the beginning, we, we would have loved to get a split, but then the way they got the split would have hurt. You know, and even then afterwards I was like, okay, three out of four was really nice. Don't get me wrong. I'm excited. But, damn, I, I was tasting that sweet, man. Yeah, I mean, we're always considered called haters because we complain about wins. Yeah. So, you know, whatever. Well, you know what? So to please the 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 10 percenters of our audience who were like, these guys complain about everything. You know what? I won't. I won't say it. Okay. You know what? We took three out of four. Okay. Uh, let's talk about that fourth game. Okay. Now that, you know, we kind of alluded to it. So the Angels won five to three, and that gave them their 39th win. Shelly Otani pitched this game against Nathan Eovaldi, mm -hmm. and this man legitimately is super hot right now. You know, insert that meme, so hot right now. <laughs> um, but, yeah, dude, Shelly Otani is an absolute monster. Maybe he's still not on the mound. Um, I, I'm not going to say he had a bad performance by any stretch. I mean, six innings pitched, two earned runs. I'll take that from mm -hmm. your ace. We're just so used to, you know, hearing Otani get, like, 13 strikeouts, mm -hmm. you know, and give up, like, one run. He only struck out three. So a little concerning, sure. You want his strikeout numbers to be high, but honestly, you know what? He picked up the win. It was a six of the season. I'll take it. He hit his 22nd home run the same time. You know, Babe Ruth used to do that, whatever. No big deal. The guy was a plumber. Yeah, we get it. But, uh, yeah, dude, Shoei Otani uh, has been fun to watch. It's, it's going to be really rough when he's on another team next year. <laughs> that, I'm only saying that because it's going to hurt a lot less when it actually happens. I, I, I hope it doesn't. I thought that you were supposed to be positive. Yeah, like Magic Johnson. Yeah. But in that series, man, he had four home runs. The one thing that I liked about that series was the fact that he was not trying to pull anything. It was just like, hey, man, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hit it. You guys are going to pitch me away? I'm going to take it. And, yeah. and stuff that he was looking at for the most part when he was just trying to pull everything, he was just going the other way, but he was doing it with a superb amounts of power. So he was crushing the ball, and he wasn't just hitting it barely over the fence. I mean, it was going upper deck center field. So it was great to see. Um, I love the – you know. I love the fact that yes, we 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 downplayed a little bit of the pitching stats, but we have to remember, man, they're they're facing that is the number one hitting club in baseball. You know, like I take shots at their pitching as far as Texas, and their pitching showed up in this series for the most part. But yep. they're it was a good series. Yeah, their their hitting though is phenomenal. You know, they've got a lot of guys that could do damage. They're not household names for the most part, except Seeger and Simeon. But uh, but the rest of those guys that can hit too. So I was very impressed. Uh, I like the fact that you know in the late, latter part of the game, I did agree with philosophy in the fact that Estevez didn't have it in the ninth, and yeah. he didn't he didn't wait. You know, as soon as he loaded the bases, he took him out, which is good. Which is good. But we'll also get into that coming up in the next series. But he he saw that the pitcher didn't have it. He faced the the bare minimum. And he trusted in Webb, and my God, Webb did a hell of a job. He absolutely did. He's the single-handedly the reason why the Angels were able to hold on to this game. Uh, now, one thing I do want to say about Texas is the simple fact that for the thing with them, yeah, they don't have any giant names yet. I think I think Jonah Heim might get to that point where he right. is one of the more respected catchers in baseball. Mm -hmm. And then the other guy who I'm going to be fearing for years to come is uh, Adelis Garcia in right field. That guy is a talent. Yep. He's great defensively. He's got a hell of a bat. And I am really scared to see the team that Texas will be. And mark my words, in the next two or three years, Texas will be one of the best teams in baseball because they're going to have a healthy DeGrom post-surgery. At least, you know, they'll get at least a good year or two out of him before he completely falls off. 
Um, you know, I don't know how long they're going to continue to have Nate Eovaldi, if they're going to continue to, you know, resign, resign deals, whatever. But the reason why I'm scared about Texas is not only are they now starting to develop one of the scariest lineups in baseball with names that most people haven't heard of, but the fact that their starting rotation is going to be very young. They have a lot of pitching prospects, and yeah. those guys are going to just provide a wealth of pitching for this organization, and we're going to be fearing the Rangers for the next couple of years. Yeah, that's why I was on record in the preseason, you know, thinking that, you know, this team is going to be with Bruce Bochy behind it, the general manager on the same page. They're finally building towards something that, yeah, you know, I wasn't expecting this this fast. Yeah. I was expecting this to be sort of the learning curve and him figuring out this what he's got as a roster. But it seems like he's done his homework and this team is much further ahead than we thought. So I'm with you, I think, in the next three to uh, two to three years, because I don't think Bochy has more than a four year to five year shelf life after this season as as far as a manager. That guy's so, super old. <laughs> yeah, I, I think for in the next two to three years they're gonna be in the World Series. I, I just I just think they're gonna be that good at some point. So you're I, I agree. They're they're gonna be a scary ass team. So this is if the uh, if there's a, ever a year to put them back in their place, it's this year. Absolutely. Now the last thing that I'll say about this series before, you know, that I've got, unless you got more after. I just got one thing on web. That's it. Okay. So uh, Shohei Otani, he had mentioned the fact that he's now starting to go up his field. Mm -hmm. And what frustrated me is that he started to fall in love with pulling. When you're a guy who is as physical and as much of a freak athlete as Shohei Otani is, you have to go the opposite way. This guy is one of the strongest, probably men in baseball. The guy, you know, has the tools, the mindset, and the ability to go opposite field. So with that being said, why would you limit yourself by forcing yourself as a pool hitter when you don't have to do that? You know, I understand the shift isn't a thing like it was, and now it's more regulated. But, you you know, you have the ability to go the opposite way. We've seen Otani do it multiple times. And now that he's not afraid and he's kind of mastered once again going opposite field, He's now the hottest hitter in baseball, if not one of them. Yeah, that's the problem. I think I think that Trout's facing the same thing. I, I, it seemed like to get out of the slump, he just took what the pitchers were giving him, like like you said, and and you know he has an opportunity. He goes with it. Trout is so stuck on on pulling the ball, he's striking out a grip. You know, like like instead of going to right field, um, he's swinging super late and fouling it off, and then and striking out an inside pitches. So yeah. I want Trout to take that same mentality as Otani. Uh, two more things left in this Texas series. One huge was Neto. Uh, losing Neto to the oblique right now, we don't know how long that could be. It could be anywhere from one to six weeks. Um, he made that fantastic catch. We all thought that he got out of that luckily without being hurt. Maybe that was what caused it. Who knows? Yeah. But losing a cog like him and then bringing up Squid, of all people, and when we have because all- Fletcher was on the bereavement list, yeah, Fletcher was on the bereavement list, and someone on the post game told me that Soto uh, didn't serve enough time after being uh, sent down, like he didn't have his uh, the right amount of days, so they couldn't call him up. Uh, so that's why they got Stefanik up like the next day. Um, one other thing about Webb, and in losing a leader like Neto, real quick, uh, that's that's going to be tough, and they've got to adjust because Neto was just coming into his own hitting. And I'm hoping this doesn't affect his hitting when he returns. And as far as Brand, uh, as Jacob Webb, the fact that he was able to go after Seager and Diaz, the heart of that lineup, and 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 he jammed Seager on a beautiful pitch, and then he he would have jammed Diaz if had he made contact, but he blew that rising fastball by him. I was like, this guy's legit got ice in his veins. The old cliche. I thought that was that was amazing. That 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 pitching performance to save Estevez and the Angels three out of four. I think it summed up how good they played in Texas. At least as of right now, he's earned enough good graces with me to you know next time philosophy comes into play, and Estevez isn't able to pitch or he just doesn't have it one day. Mm-hmm. Um, at least we know that Webb's capable. And, you know, I wasn't mad at Estevez for not having it. The guy's been a hell of a pitcher for yep. us this year. And sometimes that's going to happen. Honestly, I'm going to give Phil Nevin his flowers for this one yep. because he did what a manager should do. Did he wait a little too long? Maybe. But you know what? Once again, 
Positive Fernando <laughs> is going to say, you know, Mr. Mr. Positive, like Mantic Johnson, is going to say that um, I, I'm happy he pulled the trigger when he did, and I'm happy that in this particular instance, it paid off. I want to like Phil Nevin. Man. I was I was the one in the on the network who was pulling for Phil Nevin to come back, and you guys all made fun of me. Correct. And when he came back, you guys were like, oh, hey, he was right. You know, he did come back. Yeah. And there's some – Phil Nevin goes through some peak and valleys. If Phil Nevin can get us to the playoffs – I will, you know, I will be a Phil Nevin loyalist. My whole thing is, you know, I want us to have a manager who can grow with this team. And if he can prove to us that he is capable of getting this team to the playoffs, then maybe, just maybe, I'd be okay with him getting a three-year contract and going from there. Because this team has had too much managerial changes. I want Benji Gill to get that to be that guy, but if Phil Nevin can get us to the promised land, you know he's not going anywhere. Yeah, you can't fire a guy after an eight-year drought getting us to the postseason. That would be the stupidest thing ever. Yeah, I totally you. agree. My my thing is, too, on the post uh, post game, I'm always saying, you know what, I've never seen load management work, but if somehow this gets us to the postseason and it's one of those things that endures and the team's following with it, then unfortunately, as much as I don't like it, I'm going to give him credit next year when we're off to a slow start and we're, I'm going to be like, hey, let's trust the process because he's earned that. The yeah. reason why I haven't jumped on it is because I've never seen it done before and the Angels have given you nothing to think that they're headed the right way. So, again, every one of these games is critical. And, you know, I will, like, agree with you. In game four, he pulled all the right uh, buttons or uh, levers right there to help the Angels. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I will want to talk a little bit about load management when we talk about Rendon's injury, but we're not there yet. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, good with the Rangers series. Good with the Rangers series. Okay, cool. So now let's go. Oh, by the way, shout out to Angel's grandma who yes. was there. Yeah, she tagged us and a bunch of other pages. So I hope, uh, you know, I know she listens. So I hope you enjoyed the stadium, Angel's grandma. I wish I was there. I gave her some food recommendations. Uh, so I wish, you know, I could have, you know, shown her around. I, I miss her. Yeah, she's uh, good lady. Yeah, great lady. And then uh, let's talk now about the World Series, which Angel's grandma was also at. So mm -hmm. shout out to her again. And I think her son was there, one of her sons, her oldest son. Yes, they, they came in too. So the Angels won 3-0 against the Royals. And the big thing I want to touch on is Patty S. Back in black, man. Seven innings pitch, zero hits, zero earned runs, four walks, six Ks. His season ERA is now down to 4.08. Now, the biggest difference here is the fact that he called his own pitches. Seems to have given him a little bit of an edge. Now, I know that Mr. Todd Fox, Toe Fox, isn't a very big pitchers calling their own pitches type of guy. But in this case, it seemingly worked out. With that being said, are you going to give him the green light to call his own pitches until he gets burned? I'm I'm with you on that one. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Don't rock the boat. I mean, obviously, the Angels weren't super impressive in this game against a bad Royals team. But anytime you could shut out a major league team, I'll take it. Yeah. And and Sandoval had to snap that five game losing streak. If that's what it takes for him to get his confidence back, for him not to be hanging that slider or whatever he was doing, the bad traits, too many walks, then let's do it. I'm all for change. Uh, I would actually revert it. You know, I mean, Anderson calls his own pitches. Let the catcher call the pitches for him. And yeah. let's, <laughs> well, let, this let's, man should not call his own pitches. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Let Sandy. If if this is going to be his thing, then why not? I'm good with it. Yeah, I'm uh, trying to find his advanced stats. But he, I, I felt the offense was a little, you know, a little whack in that game. Um, they left a lot to be desired. It was, it was basically the jury night. Uh, you know, they got a sacrifice fly earlier in the game, but jury uh, knocked in both key runs. Uh, had he not done that, that game would have been a lot, uh, way more interesting than it should have been. But uh, the bullpen also picked up uh, Sandoval, and it was lights out after that. Yeah, super respectable performance by uh, by the bullpen. Uh, and, and that's one thing that I'm right now, as we currently stand, uh, I'm going to eat crow. Uh, I was talking a lot of trash about the Angels bullpen, but I mean, with one exception here in the Royals game, the bullpen has been very good. Really? The last like two or three weeks the, from a bunch of cats. We didn't expect to be good. Yeah. It was from the last week of May through this uh, 17th or whatever. The Angels are sporting an ERA of 1.43. Yeah. They're one of the best bullpens in baseball during that stretch. Yes. 
And in that game, uh, I think it was Bachman closed it out, right? The final two innings? Yep. Two innings yeah. pits, no one runs. I mean, obviously, it was a shutout. Yeah, they t- a two Ks, dude. Bachman, talk about a guy who figured it out, dude. I love Bachman in that role. Yeah, he seems to give you two innings every time, so I like that too. And uh, he's got good stuff. He blows guys away. He doesn't really goof off. Doesn't walk guys. So yeah, I, I'm I'm with you on that one too. I like Bachman. He's he's very much come into his own after we thought he was going to be a starter. So there was a lot of people for a while saying that like Bachman had potential to be a, like a, you know, back end of the bullpen guy before we drafted Ben Joyce. Mm-hmm. Cause a lot of people were like, well, we don't know if he's going to be a starter. He might end up being a bullpen guy. And everybody said, if he ends up being a bullpen guy, he'll get to the show quicker. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it took him what, about a year and a half to get to the show. Correct. Well, a year and a half has some change probably. Right. Cause he was drafted in 2021. Almost two years. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So there you have it. But um, I'm, I've been very impressed with that, with the first exception being like his very first outing where he struggled to find a little bit of command, but figured it out as he went. Since then, man, the guy's been nails. Yeah, he hasn't really let up a run at all. So, I mean, he's been he's been on it, dude, uh, very much so. And, uh, you know, nice, easy win in game one, that's for sure. Yeah, I mean, really, there's not too much to talk about here. Like you said, it was the Brandon Drury show. You know, he scored in the bulk of the runs. Matty Ice hit the other one. He's coming back down to earth a little bit. His season batting average is now 278 for Thice, mm-hmm. which is fine. I mean, you know, but if I would have asked you, hey, Todd, uh, we're going to be almost at the all-star break, which is still baffling to me. Matt Thice is going to be batting 278. I guarantee you would have taken the heartbeat. Oh, absolutely. I mean, the 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 I mean, we say it every show. The 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 amount of damage that Thice and Wallach have done, or at least what they've what they've given us so far in production is far exceeded any of our expectations. I, I never thought with Ohapi going down, Stassi being a non-factor, that we would have serious troubles at catcher. Yeah, no, as soon as Ohapi was down, I was like, well, the season's a wrap. You know, I, that's yeah. legitimately what I thought. And if Zach Neto is going to be out for longer than a couple of weeks, I, I, jury's still out on shortstop. I really don't trust Squid at all. I really don't. Yeah. Seriously, I, I do not understand why this guy's on the, in the majors. I don't understand why this guy's in a minor league contract, to be honest with you. I mean, this guy's just. Yeah, with all yeah. the all the dead weight we cut last year, how did this guy survive? Yeah. I don't understand. Exactly. <laughs> so. Yeah, I mean, people can be like, well, he's great defensively. Okay, great. But, I mean, the guy can't hit his weight. Yeah. If you're in the majors and you can at least hit your weight, great. Notice how nobody complained about Zach Neto, even when he was going through that cold streak. There was a stretch there where Zach Neto was batting like, you know, what, 200 for a while. And his yeah. batting average went down to like 230, I believe, somewhere in the 230s. And now he's kind of got it back up to almost back to the 250s. Yeah, he's like 250, 260, somewhere around there. And I'll take that, especially out of a rookie. Honestly, I mean, if Zach Neto's providing cream of the crop defense, which he is, and hell, if he was batting 230, I would take that. Because he's a rookie, the kid's still learning. And I understand the peaks and valleys are going to happen. I'll give a rookie the le- a longer leash. Well, yeah, but not only that, I mean, you got to think, too, he's working walks, so he finds yep. ways to get on base. He sacrifices. A guy like Squid, up until, like, he did have a game here against the Royals we'll talk about, where he, you know, he he stole a couple bases. He laid down a bunt now. He got on only because it was a terrible throw, but, uh, but you know, he he's really hasn't done nothing in this series either, and people were getting on me when I went on a rant. And they're like, "What do you think, Stephonic's better?" I'm like, "Uh, yeah, he was ba- he was batting 357 in the same league that that Squid was batting 214." And they're all like, "Well, he doesn't have the defense." I'm like, "Well, that's fine. Start Stephonic and then bring in uh, Squid to play after the uh, seventh yeah. or eighth inning." Seventh, eighth inning, yeah, exactly. When you, when you take the lead over, because when you have the lead, the only thing that matters is preserving it. Exactly. You know, scoring extra runs is great and dandy, but at that point, it's a cherry on top. If Alaska squeezes a little, you know, single up the up the middle there, great. Hey, I'll take that in a heartbeat. Mm-hmm. But this guy, if this, if Andrew Velasquez is going to continue to be a legitimate piece in this, you know, in this team while Zach Neto is hurt, we might be in some trouble at that position. Yeah, you know? and you know what's disgusting to me is he has literally since being called up with all the load management that Nevin does without, you know, without. Oh my God. It's like you won't Moniac only played one time in Kansas city. And, and literally it's like, you're resting that dude every other day when he's far better than, than squid in every aspect. 
yet yep. squid since being called up. Like he, he barely got his jersey in his locker. He started all four games. All yeah, I, it won't surprise I, me if he starts against the Dodgers. My my mentality on that is probably like, well, this guy's up here right now. We use an option. Let's just use the hell out of him. I mean, he's batting two thirty one. So I mean, that's not horrible right now. I'll take that from from Squid. You know, the guy weighs one hundred seventy pounds. So well, anything with a two in front of it, I'd take, and that's yeah. pathetic. that's pathetic. But I mean, like seriously though, like we have to play Moniac more. I, I'm so tired of him. Get you know he comes in there and he performs, makes diving catches, hits home runs, gets RBIs, goes three for four, and it's like up oh, hit the bench. Yeah, luckily he's been pretty good at being cold and having to heat up out of nowhere. So I can just imagine how he, how good he'd be if he played every day or at least almost every day. But yeah. uh, I know I'm harping a little bit. My bad. Yeah, right. You got to stay positive. Oh, I'm sorry. I got to stay positive. <laughs> Phil Nevin is the greatest manager of all time. Yeah, right. 100%. All right. So speaking of being positive real quick, uh -huh. I'm kind of thirsty and can really use a beer. Todd, do you know where locally I can get a brew? Uh, you can walk about five minutes away from Anaheim Stadium just across to Catella, or you could ride your bike across to Catella to Noble mm -hmm. L Works. And Noble L Works has ten, uh, was a dollar off of any kind of draft beer or whatever they have on on hand if you just mention Halos in the infield. And then you also get uh, during game days you get two for nine specials on pints. Mm -hmm. And past the seventh inning, you want to show off for friends and buy a round without really buying an extra round. Two for one specials, meaning after the seventh inning, buy one pint, get another one free. You don't need to tell the haters. <laughs> exactly. You can tell them. You can tell them that you paid and that you've spotted everyone. They're gonna be like, "Man, what a what a big baller!" Yeah, you'd be like, "Hey, I get these. Uh, I'll get the next couple rounds." And you have like two or three people right there. You pay three beers, and but you really get six. And then you'd be like, "Hey, you guys get the tip, you know, since I got all this beer." Yeah, like, exactly. Oh, okay, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. There you go. Okay, now I want to go to the game, but I don't have tickets. Should I go to you know? Stub hub where they have all these fees. Oh no, you don't want fees and you don't want, you don't want a computer dictating where you sit and giving you all these uh, extra charges and taxes. No, what you want is you want 714 tickets. Yes. 714 tickets is where you can go to get $55 tickets for the July 1st. Uh, was it a uh, tailgate Tell that get, you get the chips, you get the tacos, you get the drinks, you get the, the, uh, the bobbleheads, you get the, um, what is it? The thunder sticks and his shirt. It's all by mentioning halos in the infield, but you have to call seven, one, four tickets. Now, if you want to use the app and go anywhere, concerts, uh, events, or just an angel game or any other game that's playing locally, or if you're on the road somewhere, it works there too. Go to seven, one, four yeah. tickets. The price you see is the price you get. And if you put H I T I in the apply now code at checkout, you get an additional 10% off, and it's not just one time. How many times is it? You can use it as many times as a Buena Park Gigolo. There you go. So you just type in Buena Park. No, you don't. <laughs> type in Buena Park Gigolo in the promo. <laughs> People are going to be like, how do you spell that again? <laughs> yeah, Google Gigolo. <laughs> there you go. Make sure, make sure you're over the age of 18. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> but you get that discount over and over and over, just like a Buena Park Gigolo. There you go. <laughs> I thought that joke was dead and gone, but people continuously use it in the post game show, and I'm like, all right, I think people like that one. So. Yeah, I think that one stuck. <laughs> yeah, we'll we'll leave it. We'll leave it. Okay, so on that great note, let's now go to a super depressing note. I'm actually really upset I didn't get to listen to the post game show this evening because, like, I was on the East Coast, so by the time oh, this okay. game was over, <laughs> it was pretty yeah. damn late. The Angels lost nine to ten against the Kansas City Royals. And if I know anything about Todd, he was probably in a very good mood during this post-game show. Yeah, this was not one of the funnest post-games of, of the year, that's for sure. Um, this was a game where, again, the Angels got off to a 2 nothing lead, uh, powered by a couple home runs, Drury and, and uh, uh, Walshy, or not Walsh, uh, Ward. And, uh, yeah. it, and, and then right away, uh, you know, uh, Royals tied it up at 2. And then the Angels proceeded to put it on him and get some runs here, some runs there. Uh, Otani went deep and it all looked good. It was eight to two. Uh, Griffin Canning was going to give you yet another good quality start, which he did. 
It was only two runs on three hits when he left in the sixth inning, but he was up to about 95 pitches. So the correct move was made by lifting Canning in this game. And uh, <clears throat> they went to the bullpen. Now, an 8-2 lead, they had Colton Crow come in. And no, Ingram. Or Colton Ingram. Ingram, I'm sorry. I don't know why I keep calling him Crow. Yeah, not Colton Crow. Colton Crow is, has not been up yet to the majors. Don't oh. don't insult our boy who got drafted while sitting inside of a Chick-fil-A, sir. My bad, my bad. He was he was loving the Chick-fil-A sauce. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, but Ingram came in. And, and here's what I'll tell you, and here's what I said in the post game. I agree with every one of Nevin's moves. You know, for the most part, until the ninth inning. Uh, Now, when he brought in Ingram, I felt he could have lifted him like he did with his Stebes after three batters. But he led him in there. I think he faced six guys and he allowed like three runs. And so it allowed them back into the game. They had to, instead of just, you know, maybe maybe using Tucker Davidson had they hold on to the lead. Now you have to go with your big guys. And they went with, uh, I believe, Webb next. The one with Webb, yep. He yeah. pitched point two innings, so he was able to get the team out of a jam. He gave up no runs. Yeah. So he stays hot, man. 1.93 ERA. Yeah, he stayed hot right there. But then they went with Soriano, and Soriano's been nails. So I thought that was a it was a good move. But Soriano got into trouble. He walked the first two guys, then he get, uh he hit a batter, they got a base hit, scored a run. All of a sudden you're in more trouble. And then they had to call on Davinsky to put that fire out which he did. And so all of us anticipated, okay, we're going to go with Estevez because remember Estevez hadn't pitched since the last game in Texas. So he had a day off. And so you're thinking, okay, Estevez. Nevin, after the game said he needed another day rest, I freaked out because I'm like, okay, wait a minute. You already had a day off. After the Kansas City series, you get another day off. You play two with the Dodgers and you get another day out. How much rest does this motherfucker need? Yeah. Like, 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 and so, so it's like, again, this is a game that you lost because of poor management because he puts Davinsky in a ninth inning. The Royals then tie the game or an eighth inning. They tie the game when he came, comes back out. He gets out of the jam on a great catch by Moniak. You go to the ninth inning, you get that RBI from Trout, finally comes through clutch. Estevez, Estevez, Estevez. I would have bet the house they would have went with Estevez. And they go right back to Davinsky. And yeah. There you go. Yeah, this one was a frustrating one. And it was frustrating because this is one of those games where, yeah, maybe there was some bullpen mismanagement at the very end. But this is one where you unfortunately has to tip your cap to the Royals, right? Mm-hmm. This particular day, they were the better team. And like you said, really, there was no awful moves. You know, I mean, Ingram, well, you know, he was a guy who was coming up probably for a short cup of coffee up in the show. The Angels had a healthy lead. That's probably when you put that kind of guy in, right? Yeah, so that's, that's I don't blame him for that. Was he in there a little too long? Maybe. You know, Webb came and put out the fire. Obviously, no problem there. So, Rihanna, like you said, he's been nailed up to this point. So, you can get mad about that. I'm going to give him a free pass. This season ERA is still 3.68, and he's done well overall. He's a rookie. He's up here. He's still figuring it out. So occasionally you're going to get lit up, and that's fine. So yep. you know what? I'm not even mad at uh, Soriano. But uh, there's no excuse why you shouldn't have given Estevez an opportunity. And Davinsky, once again, he's the guy. If you don't have Estevez, you want to give it to Davinsky. Because Davinsky, another guy. He's been nails. So once again, I won't exactly put that on Phil Nevin. But um, this was just a really, really frustrating game to lose. Yeah, it was tough because the Royals had lost 10 in a row, so you broke their losing streak. And then on top of that, Texas beats Toronto. So you lose a game in the in the, in the the standings, so you're like, damn it, you know, we, we could have took advantage. You know, Houston lost, uh, Texas won. We could have stayed with them. We could have jumped Houston at that point. So it was one of those, like, come on, man, like, like, Pull, make the right move here. And so that was definitely, definitely a frustrating game to lose. And obviously, like, uh, I think was beautifully said by Mark Langston at the end of the game, because Terry Smith said he was trying to do the whole halo honk thing and say, hey, you know what? Uh, There's certain, you know, this was one of those games where you lose, where you're supposed to win. And he goes, I know there's going to be games where where we win, where we're supposed to lose. And Langston's like, that's fine, but. You shouldn't lose to uh, the team like the Royals, especially when you're six runs up in the seventh inning. Yeah, exactly. It's a frustrating one. And like I said, you have to give Kansas City some credit, right? 
They yeah. fought back against what's probably, at least as of right now, a very intimidating Angels bullpen. Yes. And they were standing at the bottom of a mountain looking up, and they got the job done. Unfortunately, that's what we love about this game sometimes, that it gives those teams an opportunity. And sometimes for us, that works out, and we're that team. In this case, we're not. We're on the opposite end. And this would have been a lot less frustrating if we didn't have such a big lead. You know, if we would have lost like three to two, okay, whatever that yes. happens. Yes. You know, you don't want to lose against a team like Kansas city. The good news is we still won the series, but you know, this is one of those games that if we're sitting there in September and we're like three games back with like five games left, this is the game you're going to look at. And we've said that a couple of times right now, there's about a handful of them and there that's is. better than where we normally have been. You know, the last couple of years, right before the All Star break, we're sitting here talking about, you know, oh well, hey, let's let's trade everybody. Yeah. So right now, we're probably buyers. The trade deadline was tomorrow. The Angels are buying, is my guess. Oh yeah, absolutely, they're buyers. Uh, the one more thing about that is, you know, the, with the Ingram move too. You know, we've gotten extremely lucky as a team to be able to pull up these rookies, Bachman, Soriano, and so on and so on. And they've actually been able to put out fires and pitch yeah. really good and hold this bullpen together. So we were due for a guy to come up and just not have it. You know, just yeah. like Estevez didn't have it the other night. That, like you said, that happens. Closers don't go 57 for 57 unless you're hopped up on steroids like uh, the, the dude from the Dodgers a few years ago. Eric Gagne? Yeah, Eric Gagne, yeah. If, if, if you're cheating uh, habitually, yes, then you might be able to be perfect. But we don't have a Gagne in this bullpen, but we do have some very good, lively arms. And uh, we've we've gotten very lucky with the guys we pulled up to have the success they've had. It's just it's just funny. It, like you said, this that's why we love this game. Not only did one guy just not have it, the entire bullpen didn't have it. Yeah, and, you know, at least we as fans can think about this game. And like we said, Phil Nevin made the right moves. They just didn't pan out. And Correct. As much as a loss like this sucks, I can take a loss like this knowing that, you know what, we shouldn't have lost this game. Absolutely correct. When you have the lead you do, your bullpen should lock it down. But with how good this bullpen has been lately, I can live with this loss, assuming that this team could continue to fire on all cylinders the rest of the way. And, you know, they made up for it game three. Trout and Otani being some of the biggest factors. Otani continues to stay hot. And Trout may be starting to come around just a little bit. His at-bats over the last, you know, five, six games have been a lot better. Yep. The guy's still getting on base. He's starting to catch up a little bit to the fastballs. So I'm really hoping that he can get his timing. I don't know why I just keep on swirling my finger around <laughs> like I'm driving an imaginary you know, car. You're like, wax on, wax off. Yeah, wax on, wax off. Anyway. But yeah, uh, so that was really nice to see. We get a Trout Tawny back to back Jack again. Um, yeah, like I said, man, I'm hoping that Trout is going to slowly start to come out of it. I'm not a Trout hater. I love Trout. This team will not be able to be an effective team in the playoffs if Mike Trout is cold. And could you imagine a world where the Angels make the playoffs and Trout gets into the playoffs batting like 250 and people are like, what the hell happened? Yeah, I mean, we're. I, I'm assuming that you know he could still save his season because he's. I think he's locked oh, yeah. at 50, 15 home runs, about forty RBIs. If he were to get, just go on a tear in the second half, there's no doubt he can reach a hundred RBIs and he can have about fifty home runs. So, I know he's very capable of doing it. But like you said, he he had a nice ending to that series. The last couple games in particular, he had two or three more hits. He worked the walk. He only had the one strikeout um, or line out. And he was hitting the ball really hard, so that's a good thing to see um, against yeah. a, a guy like Grinky, who he normally struggles against. Yeah. So, um, so it was good to see the back-to-back -back jacks. Uh, even also uh, notable in that game was Walsh, Jared Walsh hitting his first home run of the year. So that was nice to see because mm -hmm. I hadn't seen anything elevated by him at all this year, and yeah. so that was the first time he hit one over the fence and a, a nice clean shot. And again, like you've said before, uh, is Tyler Anderson gets all the run support. Five more runs in that game. And what a job by freaking Jaime Biera out of the bullpen, uh, just bridging the gap to Estevez. Um, before I talk on exactly what you said right there, Trout in his last seven, 24 at-bats. He's batting 292, four RBIs, a home run, and his on-base percentage is 471. Awesome. So 
you know, his average, you know, 292, I'll take that, especially for a guy who was, you know, struggling really bad because in his last 15, he's batting 189 still. So that shows you the difference in those two weeks right there. Mm-hmm. So hopefully his his average now will, you know, creep to like the, the 310s, 315s during that stretch. So he can really start to get a respectable batting average. But, you know, to say he's getting on base is an understatement. Like I said, 471, you're flirting with half the time. But, um, yes, to say we're uh, – going back to what you said about the bullpen – Anderson continues to be one of the luckiest son of a guns alive. <laughs> uh, Jaime Berea. Yeah. Guys, guys been nails and he was not good. His last start, he wasn't bad, mm-hmm. but he wasn't great. Like we've seen. So he came down to earth a little bit. So this was really nice to see him come to have three very solid innings. You know, he only had one strikeout, but he's not really the K kind of guy. No nope. trust the defense behind him. And the defense normally hasn't let him down. I'm like, you know, Patrick Sandoval, he can't say the same thing. Mm-hmm. The defense forgets how to defense. When Sandoval's pitching, so he needs. I think Sandoval needs to yell at them like our boy Lackey and Weaver used to do. Maybe that's yeah. that's the factor. But but yeah, Jaime, I, I've been very impressed. Again, I feel bad they scratched him from a start, but they they said, "Hey man, can you mop up? Can you bridge the gap to the closer?" And again, because God forbid those pitchers pick pitch on back to back days before a day off, they needed that day off, and and Jaime was pushed into that role, and Jaime didn't bitch about it. And he pitched a great, you know, got those nine outs. And Estevez looked uh, solid in the ninth after having two days off before another yeah. day off. That's so, not enough days off, Todd. Yeah, I guess not. He needs a week. But uh, I'm not <laughs> liking the load management. I'm hating it. But, you know, we're racking up wins, and it's kind of hard to argue it. So that's the frustrating thing coming from myself. Yeah. But they did, in, in all actuality, even though they got that loss, the final thing I'll say about this series is, they won the series. And that's what we've always talked about as a page from day one when we first started three years ago was just win series and good things will happen. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so talking about the load management topic over there, is load management really working? And really the person I'm talking about specifically is Anthony Rendon. They have been extremely adamant about making sure he's off his feet, giving him a little bit of rest. It's not working, man. I am so done with Anthony Rendon. Yes. It went from, hey, we took him out to, okay, he probably won't need to go on the IL, just needs a couple of days off, to randomly out of nowhere today on the day off, it's he's going on the IL again. I'm so over this, dude. I really am, dude. I don't get it. This man's getting paid $38 million. You know what? Cover your ears, kid. Stop being a bitch, bro. Seriously. I, I'm, I'm so over it. I'm so tired of this narrative that he continues to pitch about, well, the fans don't care. and They don't know what it's like. And this is my body. It's just, it frustrates me, man. How are you going to say stuff like that to a fan base full of hardworking people who spend their hard earned money to support this team, take their family to games, knowing that this asshole getting paid $38 million, you know, continuously whines like a three-year-old and doesn't put in the work. Dude, this guy, you're getting paid to be a leader on this team. And, you know, some good news started to come out about the kind of leader that Anthony Rendon is. You know, he's the loud guy in the locker room. And that's good. That's what I expect out of a guy who gets $38 million. I'm upset that it took us so long to hear, but, you know, Mm -hmm. most of our media is a little candy ass as well. So, you know. No way. Yeah. (laughs) No, I I, I don't disrespect to them. I like a lot of members of our media personally on a personal level. Yeah. But that doesn't change the fact that, you know, they get a lot of softball questions thrown out there. And that was the thing that, I, you know, <clears throat> talking about if you look around the league, guys get hit on the hand all the time. Hell, guys get hit on the wrist. I, I remember seeing a game earlier this year where Trout got hit on the unex, uh, what is it, uh, unexposed, uh, uh, what do you call it, elbow. And the ball hit him so hard, he already had a cherry mark. It was already bleeding. He didn't leave the game. He stayed in there, finished the bat, and and finished the game. And and there's several players that are playing in their 40s, you know, that aren't bitching and moaning about everyday wear and tear. They're yeah. playing 30 to 50 percent more than this guy is. And the fact that if you look at his last two injuries, and again, me and you gave him the credit, uh, you know, benefit of the doubt. You know, we were kind of upset the way the Angels are coddling him in the first month or so. But the fact of the matter is, is, hey, he's not hitting the home runs, but me and you were like, if this is the Anthony Rendon that's getting on base, potential leadoff guy, 
setting the table for the other guys or driving in Trout and Otani when they're on base, getting the sacrifice. He was leading the team in sacrifice RBIs. It's like, okay, he's being productive. He's playing decent at third base. We'll take Tony two bags, you know, or Absolutely. Tony Tony sacrifice. Tony tend to. Yeah, but <laughs> that's what it's turned into. Look at his last two injuries. Correct me if I'm wrong, but is this his third or fourth stint on the IL? I think it's only his second this year, right? Because he missed some days just early on, but I don't think he went on the IL. And then he had that like longer strike where like I think like three weeks, and now okay. he's on the ten day. I'll okay, check. I'll check. Okay, because because what what it is is look at his last two injuries that he's had. The last in the previous one before this one, it was a ground ball that took a weird hop and it, and it kind of like a one hopper, and it hit him hard off the inner thigh. Okay, you. we thought at the time, oh, it's day-to-day. He freaking hits the IL, and all of a sudden, you know, he's having trouble walking and stuff. And then you have a guy like, you know, his last injury, he gets hit on the hand, and, you're, and they're saying day-to-day. When I was listening to the um, the game, game three, because I was working during um, the finale, um, you know, Terry brought it up several times. Well, he looks like uh, Rendon, he's, he, he, we knew he wasn't going to make the road trip and be uh, playing here, but uh, definitely when we come back uh, home, he'll be in, uh, inserted in the Dodgers series for sure. So they were told, hey, yeah, this guy's right around the corner. You know, he just needed a couple days of rest. We wasted a roster spot for those two days, not having the depth on the bench because he's telling the training staff or the training staff's telling us that, hey, He's he's good to go. He's day to day. Uh, no need to put him on the IL. Well, days later, he's on the IL. Yeah, I really, I'm really starting to not like this man. By the way, uh, two two stints. This okay, year. the second stint. Okay. Yeah. Um, it's just to me, it's embarrassing. I mean, like, had we not had paid Trout all that money, and not have the issue of Otani being, you know, the highest paid player. Let's just say Otani has one more year left on his deal. The main thing, I mean, he would be bigger than pools. There's still people when you post a question of the day or when it's brought up about, you know, on the, on the IL stint, everyone's saying, oh, no, you know, someone would say this is the worst contract in Angels baseball because they listened to our podcast where we broke it down. But there you still have people saying, oh, no, pools. Oh, no, Gary Matthews Jr. Oh, no, Mo Vaughn. We went through that. Those guys put up numbers while they were wearing our jerseys. Yeah. Not the not the particular numbers that we anticipated, but they put up numbers. He Absolutely. has not. No, he has not performed, and he hasn't earned the money he's gotten. It's just it's it, it's embarrassing at this point. He's milking the Angels for everything they're worth. And don't get me wrong, I I love that you see a money. I just hate that it affects the team. Correct. <laughs> you know, because if your family means so much to you and you don't want to win, retire. Yep, retire. Do walk us all away. a favor and walk away. Walk, walk into away. the sunset. You can go to wherever the hell you live in Baloneyville, Texas, you know, <laughs> where you have the milkman who drops the milk off. Great. Okay, go. We don't need you. This fan base doesn't need you. And to be honest, this fan base has never needed you. Mm. And shame on us for truly believing that this man wanted to come here to win a championship. He saw his payday opportunity. He took it and he's milked it for everything it's worth. You know, he said multiple times that his, he doesn't listen to this kind of stuff, but that he has family and friends that do. So if any of you guys are listening and you're friends with Anthony Rendon, you let him know that the guy's an embarrassment to the organization. Because I don't understand his whole mindset about, well, I want to be there for my kids. Great. Okay. Every parent wants to be there for their kids. But if Todd doesn't work, his kids aren't getting fed. Okay. Insert parent's name here. If they don't work, their kids don't get fed. Normal people have to make those sacrifices of spending time away from their kids to put food on the table, to send their kids to summer camp, to, you know, Girl Scout trip, whatever the hell, insert whatever your kid wants to do. Parents have to make those sacrifices. You decided to be a baseball player for a sport that you are not passionate about. That is on you. Nobody forced him to be a baseball player. Nobody forced him to take this giant contract, Okay. When he made that decision, he should have known that he wasn't going to be there for every single one of his kids' events. I know what it's like to miss your kid's first T-ball game. I know what it's like to miss your kid's first kindergarten game. I know what it's like to miss a spouse's birthday. I know what it's like to miss, you know, your girl- girlfriend's anniversary. I know what all that kind of stuff's like. But you know who else knows that? Normal people. If you want to be a normal person, Anthony, go be a normal person. 
and stop torturing fans who continuously want to give you an opportunity. We talk a lot of trash about you, but I have a Rendon jersey. I have multiple Rendon shirts. Why? Because I want to believe that this guy is capable of being the guy. We have, you know, Nats fan who listens to this show. She follows the page. She views Anthony Rendon as a hero. And I want to view Anthony Rendon in that same light. And I know that in there, he has the ability to be that guy because he was at one time. Father Time's undefeated. Maybe he is no longer that guy. But as long as he's getting paid $38 million on this team, I will continue to hope that he's going to be that guy. And you best believe, because I'm hoping that he's going to be that guy, when he proves to me once again that he's not, and he's another cupcake ass who just wants his money, I will be there to call him out. And remember, the last thing I'll say before I let you go is I was the one this offseason who said, if this man finishes top five in the MVP voting, I will donate $500 of my own money to a charity of his choice. And when he doesn't respond, to charity of our listeners' choice. So I went out there and indirectly called him out because there's no way he's going to listen to it. But I was willing to put my own money. And you know me, I'm a man of my word. If I bet $500 to charity that this man couldn't do it and he did it, I would have happily paid it. That would have been some of the happiest 500 bucks I spent. But he can prove me wrong. Or he proved me right. He doesn't want to be here. And that's a shame because, again, he's a guy that, like, when we first got him, I anticipated he was going to be like a Troy Gloss, you know, for us over at third. He'd be a staple for a good four to five years, uh, knocking in 30 home runs or close to it and the RBIs. And, and again, Nats fan told us in the beginning because she was here since the beginning that, hey, you know what? You guys got to steal. This guy's good, blah, blah, blah. And it's not that she's wrong. Yeah, it's not that she's wrong because he was mostly that for Washington. It's just for whatever reason, I think a lot of what's played into it is, you know, sometimes mostly in pro football and mostly now with baseball, you know, Perry didn't make that signing. Epler did. And yeah. I think Perry's got a way of signing guys where he's said flat out, you've got to be and, you know, you got to have that right mindset. We're looking for for a, a typical play or, or a player that fits our angel way like we joked about the angel way not having one but it seems like we do have one in the, and the players he's drafted or brought on a board have fit in for the most part and i don't think rendon has or can when you have that kind of attitude or mindset so yeah i mean those fans would love nothing more like you do when you have the jersey or the shirts or whatever that we got from the games for this guy to fit in and be that third cog in the lineup and, and, and be a problem, you know, give us a murderous row, but it's never turned into that because he's never on the field. And it's frustrating when you see a guy like Gio Urshela who basically broke his pelvis on a play at first base. And he's telling the coaching staff afterwards, Hey, I'm I'm all right. I I still want to stay in. They have to, they were like, no, 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 we're, we're going to yeah. x-ray you. You know what I mean? Like, like, like Duke gets- and, oh, he got hurt and he played for like a couple of days, right? Like they didn't put him on the IL. He missed a couple of games and then he played again. Right. And then he yeah. got re-injured. They, yeah. They, it got worse. But yeah. I mean, like they, the literally, literally he played through some serious pain and we have a guy here making what, you know, or is making a one year, 10 year or something like that. Yeah. This is his last year of arbitration, but see, with that being said, that's probably it. This guy's trying to pay for a contract, right? Yeah. And he knows if he, let's just say he's shut down for the season. He knows that he's only going to be getting paid, you know, in theory for the small stint he had where he was batting, you know, 310, which is great, but it's a lot harder to get a lot more money because people can be like, oh, it was a flash in the pan. Correct. So I understand where his incentive was. I mean, Rendon got his payday. What does he care about? He gets paid either way. That's how baseball money works. Fuck it. Yeah, it's unfortunately that's one thing I wish that it would change is they would adopt the football thing and be like, "Hey, man, we can cut you if you're not performing." Yeah, good uh, luck with that. Yeah, that's not going to happen <laughs> in our in our lifetime. I don't think that's going to happen. No, no, definitely not. But uh, but yeah, I am I'm very disappointed in Rendon. Um, you know, this is this is too much. You know, especially yeah. right now with the depth that's on the team, we've gotten hit with injuries. We can actually use him right now. You know. Yeah. Exactly. That's the most frustrating thing. Uh, all right. Um, Dodgers preview. Yeah, we, get, we we don't have much on it because they're not giving us the game two starter, but we do have the game one starter. 
Well, I don't know, man. TBD is pretty dangerous. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So uh, you said a couple weeks ago that you knew, or you and Dominic had said in the post game show after we did the live stream that you knew that Clayton Kirchhoff was going to pitch against us, and lo and behold, there he is. Here yeah. he comes with an eight and four record, a two point nine five ERA, ninety eight strikeouts against our version of Clayton Kershaw, a also our version of Andrew Heaney, Reed Demers, who's one and five with a four point four eight ERA and seventy six strikeouts. Uh, I'm going to go out on a limb and say this game's going to be a big fat L because we don't ever, ever, ever sit on Clayton Kershaw's curveball, even though we have some good curveball hitters, and he's probably just going to carve us up. So. I hate to say it because, again, like with, I'm going to agree with you in a sense because Kershaw, if he throws anything that looks like it's coming over for a strike, it's usually going to break down in the zone. He never throws a flat fastball unless it's postseason. So, like, <laughs> so like his his fastballs during the regular season, if they start high, they're going to fall into the strike zone so that's where you can get him but a lot of these hitters chase so much and he's in another year where guys are just chasing left and right i'm gonna go on a limb and because we got swept last year oh no i'm gonna actually go with my inner halo honk i think we i think we make him pile up his pitches and we get to that really janky dodger bullpen which i'm not used to saying and we Yeah, yeah Okay, so you're going for a game one win. I, I think I think this is not a – either starter is not going to get a decision in this game. I'm going for the bullpens. Okay, all right. All right, so we don't agree on this one. All right, game two. Uh, we have Shoei Otani. Let him cook. I don't care who their pitcher is unless Jesus Christ is pitching and he's using the Angels from Angels in the outfield. I'm taking a win on this one. I think it's a serious split. I think, you know, these are two balanced teams. The Dodgers have been heating up. They're 39 and 33. The Angels are 41 and 33. So for the first time in a long time, we have two very balanced teams. The problem is right now we are a little weakened because the, you know, we have uh, Rendon out. We have Urshela out. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be really interesting to see what the Angels can do. Also, I won't be surprised if we hear some news that maybe David Fletcher got called up. I think he's back. I think he was activated. Yeah, I think he, it, it's not official, but I heard he's at least on a taxi squad for now. Yeah, so I wouldn't be surprised, assuming he is back and healthy, to see him uh, come up. I'm calling for a sweep in this one. I think. Wow. Could, yeah, I, I think I think Otani outduels whoever to be announced is going to be or to be determined. Uh, the Dodgers pitching staff, and we didn't get a chance to break them down. They just lost Muncy, too, one of their best home run hitters to the I.L., uh, before the series, they do have Outman. They have, a, you know, obviously they have, uh, um, what's his name, Betts. Uh, they have Will Smith. They do have some hitters on this team. They have J.D. Martinez, a guy who's used to kill us when he was with Boston. Yep. Um, but for the most part, you know, they they you know and they have Freddie Freeman. But Jason Hayward's been uh, not very good. Uh, their defense has been very, sh- uh, very average. But their bullpen pitching and their starting pitching, because of all the injuries, they don't have Urias. Or urinal cake, uh, Your obviously. Cyclops. Yeah, Cyclops. <laughs> you don't have, uh, you know, Bueller. Obviously, thank God. Um, but uh, but no, they they are really in trouble. And right now, as it looks like, the Angels are actually in the playoffs. If the season were to end today, they're plus one. They would have that uh, the second wild card, or uh, they're right behind. Uh, they're right behind uh, Baltimore uh, and Houston, and the Yankees are tied for the last one. The Dodgers right now. Are uh, are a game up on the last wild card. They're thirty nine, thirty three, like you said, but um, as the division looks right now, the Dodgers are in third. They're four games out. The Giants leapfrogged them after a sweep, and the Arizona Diamondbacks, uh, forty three and thirty and twenty nine, dude. Yeah, it's another team who's starting to prove that maybe they can do it this year, dude. Corbin Carroll, uh, their rookie, he's having a hell of a season. He's uh, in the MVP race. Yeah, every time you watch a Diamondbacks highlight reel, he's in it somehow prominent. Yeah, I mean, they, so he, he's a fun guy to watch. I'm a fan. I'm yeah. a fan of his for sure. Okay, so you, I'm going split. You're going sweep. So, I'm man. Kidding, I'm, I'm honking my honk big time right now. This man, show me your honks. I, I'm chafing my honk right now. <laughs> oh, God, shaking your honk. Get this man some lotion. <laughs> Clean up on aisle three. Clean up on aisle. Oh, Tony. <laughs> well, 
Wait, what's the, what's the one? Let's see if I pick the right one here. And of course, I was. No, oh, I know, not that one. This one. John Stamos choked on me. There you go. <laughs> oh, God. That gives me emotional damage. <laughs> emotional damage. Yeah, that one's by far my favorite. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, that's that's what I've got on it, man. Um, happy with where the team is right now. It, but I will say this next week is going to be really interesting because we're going to really find out a lot about who this team can be because they've had a lot of key injuries now. So with that being said, it is really sink or swing time because things can get really bad really quick in the next week. And baseball being the way it is, this, ser- this season can officially end in the next couple days if we let it. That is true, and my biggest thing too would be, um, it. Let's just say that it does play out to whether either it's a split or a sweep by the Angels. You know, I don't want an emotional damage letdown against the White Sox. You know, because they kind of like played down to Kansas City a little bit, especially in the first couple games. Um, I I really hope that they keep the foot on the gas and they go after Chicago. Yeah, we'll preview that series uh, after this one. So yeah, because Chicago's not a good looking team. I'm looking at them right now, and it's like, wow, they're they're in shambles themselves. Yeah, Keaton Middleton's like their best bullpen arm, so yeah, which is <laughs> which is shocking, but I'm I'm happy for the guy at the same time. Yeah, yeah, same. Yeah. All yeah. right, so that's all I got. Uh, any final words? No, thanks for listening, guys. So always appreciated, and hopefully next time we get the trio back. So. Yeah, we can, get, we can congratulate Courtney for uh, accomplishing her master's degree. Round Absolutely. of applause if she's listening. We're we're super proud of you, Courtney. You know, we 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 have so much love for you and for your family, and you know, you have become really really a, a close friend of mine. And I'm sure Todd would probably echo the same sentiment. I agree. Ah! She, ah! Did a, <laughs> she did a great job, man. So, yeah, we 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 both uh, congratulate her for for because uh, getting. Getting through that is is uh, is is tough when you got everyday life and things thrown at you, but you get your masters. You know, congratulations, and uh, you know, hopefully things uh, go the get the, you get the profession you want, or as far as like the advance in your career. Yeah, you don't want to be the like the, the people who are like, oh, I have a bachelor's degree and I work like in the movie theater. I mean, there's nothing wrong <laughs> with that. There's nothing wrong with that, but I mean, I'm saying that happens far too often nowadays. It does. So, it does. Sending some good vibes to her, and hoping it doesn't happen. So exactly. we'll touch base with her when she's back on. Yep. All right. So for Todd Fox and the Lone Star Halo, we bid you farewell. We'll talk to you on the flip side of the Dodger series. Deuces.